Hi, I'm Colin Butcher, the Pet Detective, and you're watching Pet Detective TV. In this video, one of a series of four, I'm going to be taking a close look at the four categories of dog thief that are stealing all the dogs throughout the UK. I will be explaining exactly how these guys operate, and more importantly, what you can do as a dog owner to protect yourself um, from all the dog thieves that are operating around the UK. So if you like what you see, um, please don't forget to subscribe to my video, add comments below, and links to any references I make throughout the video will be found in the comments section below. So let's crack on with the first video. The first category of dog thief that I want to introduce you to is the specialists. Now specialist dog thieves uh, cut their teeth on rural crime, so stealing from farms, stealing quad bikes, farm machinery, uh, saddlery. Um, so they know their way around the countryside and occasionally, going back about 10 years ago, they would steal um, a farm dog. What's happened in the last say two to five years is these specialists have moved away from uh, rural crime on quad bikes, saddlery, etc., and now focusing all their efforts on stealing dogs. But they still, by and large, are targeting rural premises, so breeders, uh, kennels, boarding kennels, um, and anybody that tends to keep their dogs kenneled outside. They also focus around spring on country car parks, beauty spots, where they know that around spring and right the way through the summer, more and more people are using those locations. So they sit uh, in those areas and wait for people to happen along that are a little bit unaware and perhaps um, a bit distracted. So I'm going to be explaining exactly how we defeat their objective. So let's move on to how the specialist dog thieves operate in the country car parks all over the place. And I know a lot of dog owners uh, use these locations all year round but generally in the spring there's a significant increase in activity as people take the dogs out for the longer country walks. Now they tend to work in pairs which I've already mentioned sometimes they'll have two vehicles. What they're doing is they're sitting in these car parks and they're waiting to see people come into the car parks with their dogs either at the end of the walk or driving in for the start of the walk and they're looking for people that are distracted and have their dogs off lead running around their feet. And then they will move in and very, very quickly shepherd the dog away from its owner and steal it. And quite often they will use a distraction technique. It's called turning the mark. And what that means is this. One of the two individuals will approach the dog owner from the opposite direction and ask a, a question for directions or something quite simple. And because in Britain we're all quite polite, we don't want to offend, so we will take a few seconds to answer that question. And that's all the other dog thief needs to steal your dog, because he will have a high value treat in their possession. He will have a lure dog, which might be a dog in heat, or even have a rag in his possession that is being wiped around a dog that's in heat. What they're trying to do is to tease your dog away from you. So whilst one is distracting you, the other moves in puts a leash on your dog and moves out the area immediately. And I've seen dog thieves complete the theft within five seconds on a CCTV system. They're very, very quick. Now, one of the prime objectives of a specialist dog thief is not to get caught. And what they do in order to avoid getting caught is they will seek to persuade you, the dog owner, that your dog has run off. So sometimes what they will do is after they've asked the innocent question and turned you away from where your dog is, they'll point in that opposite direction and say, oh, is that your dog? You immediately turn and start going across there in a rush, not realizing that the second individual or part of the team has already stolen your dog. And on some occasions, they will actually hang around in the car park a bit longer, um, assisting you looking for your dog that isn't actually there. The idea is to install in your mind that your dog has run away as opposed to being stolen. Okay, so let's move on to the car park itself. And I've come up with a really, really handy mnemonic for you to remember. Now, if you think 
that the dog thieves that are hanging around these car park are rats, then that's where you need to be careful. So when you're in the car park, you're thinking, where's the rat? Now the R starts for remain alert whenever you're in the car park. And what you need to do is you need to be on your game. You need to be on, uh, on your guard around the car park. So when you arrive, just have a look around. Is there anything that makes you feel that little bit uneasy? And we're all very, very perceptive. So if you feel uneasy, there's usually a very, very good reason for that. Secondly, the A of RAT stands for assess the area. When you arrive, just have a look to see if there's any signs of recent criminal activity. And the obvious is if the police have placed these bright yellow or orange signs saying thieves operate in this area. I mean, that's a pretty clear clue that you should be thinking, well, if these operate in this area, I'm not walking my dog in the area. Don't ignore those signs because they only tend to get put up if there's a pattern of crime as opposed to a single incident. And also look out for notices where other dog owners have said my dog's run off or stolen. That should be a clear indicator to you that dog thieves are operating in the area. And my best advice there is don't use that particular car park, find somewhere else. Thirdly, the T of rat is take your dog to and from the car park on a lead. If your dog is supervised, if you are aware of your surroundings, i.e. you're not distracted, then the dog thieves are not gonna focus on you. They'll try and focus on someone else. When you arrive at the car park, there's a chance you might be in deep, deep in conversation with a friend, you might be talking to your children, or you might be on the mobile phone. That conversation now needs to end. You're in the car park. This is where you're at the greatest risk. So flick the phone off and put it away. Your dog's not asking much of you that you give her or him some attention during the walk. So the phone should be used for just emergency purposes only. Keep it tucked away in your pocket throughout the walk. Secondly, when you get out of the car, get yourself prepared. Don't allow the dog to charge out. Keep your dog within the car. Get yourself ready for the walk. Get your children ready for the walk. And if you're with a friend, wait until they're ready. When everybody's ready to go, that's when you start to think about getting your dog out of the car. It's the last thing that you do. Here's another tip for you. When you go to your dog, show your dog a treat bag and have in your possession some high value treats. Put that treat bag into a pocket and tap it. Make sure your dog spots where you're putting it. The final thing that you do is put your lead on your dog and then you take your dog out of the vehicle and you and your family or your friends leave the car park with your dog on the lead. Now, once you're away from the car park, here's some more advice that I would give you. The very first thing that I do on every single walk I have with my dog, and I sometimes walk her two or three times a day, is I check a recall. I make sure she knows that this is part of the routine, so she expects it. Once you feel that you're safely away from the car park, unclip the lead and send your dog off, but immediately do the recall. And as you do the recall, move your hand to the pocket where you've placed the super treats. You want your dog to think, I know exactly what is in that pocket. You want your dog to come back. So two other important uh, tips when you're walking your dog. First and foremost, I have forgotten how many people have contacted me and said that their dog has gone missing during a country walk, but they're not entirely sure where it went missing. And that's because they've allowed their dog to get out of their sight. So keep your dog in your line of sight. Now that might be 10 yards, it might be 100 yards. That's up to you. As long as you can see your dog and you are very, very confident that when you use your recall, your dog will return to you. And please don't become one of those people that's constantly pipping on a whistle because all you're doing there is teaching your dog to ignore the whistle. A whistle should only ever be used on a dog walk as a last resort. The voice command should always be sufficient to get your dog back to you. Secondly, keep your dog in front of you. Don't allow it to lag behind. Now, a lot of dogs, and I'm sure owners will relate to this, will tend to lag back when the walk is coming to an end. They'll hang around the sense that they may have missed when they were charging around at the start of the walk or they're deliberate hanging about because they don't want the walk to end. 
you do not want that to happen because especially as you're coming back towards the car park you're starting to move now into the territory of the specialist dog thief again so you need to keep your eyes on your dog and as I've already said to you your mobile phone has no place during a walk other than to be used for an emergency keep it in your pocket and as you start to approach the car park that's when you think about putting your dog back on a lead recall it as you did at start reward the recall put your dog back on the lead and then re-enter the car park with your dog under close supervision and remember that's where the rats are so you need to be on your game you need to be alert and you do the reverse when you return to the car park from when you left the car park which is the very very first thing you do is you open your car you put your dog into the car, you take care of its needs, any treats, any food, any water. And once your dog is settled in the car, close the door and sort yourself out, sort your children out, sort your friends out. And then you get into the car last. Get your dog closely supervised and secure so the thieves cannot steal your dog. So in summary, remember the rats are always in the car park. Remember during the course of the walk to keep your dog line in sight, no lagging behind, and test the recall at the start of every single walk. You need to have confidence that when you call your dog, your dog will come back immediately. That is perhaps the most important piece of training any dog owner can do with their dog. A final point is this. I like to say uh, sharing is caring. So if you see something suspicious when you're on a walk, if you see somebody hanging around a car park and you're not too sure about them, then report it. Make sure that local communities are aware, make sure the police are aware, because it's through those reports, through you sharing what you suspect, that will drive these specialist dog thieves away from the car parks. Because if we raise the risk of them being caught, then they won't come there anymore. So that's it, that's how the specialist dog thieves operate. That's my advice on how you can protect yourself. If you like the video, please, uh, put a comment down below, share it amongst your friends. Um, please subscribe to my channel and then we'll give you alerts when the, the next videos are, are up and released. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Colin Butcher and you've been watching Pet Detective TV. Goodbye.